As the practice of paper folding has crisscrossed the world, it's taken on a life of its own. In South Korea, it's known as Changi Choki, and it's an activity taught in primary school. Now, the craft has found its way to higher education. We're here at Seoul National University. It's widely regarded as the top university here in South Korea. And researchers here have embraced the art of paper folding to fold and unfold DNA at a nano scale. This is groundbreaking stuff. When we ask the question, how small can we go with origami? Ultimately, we can't go much smaller than individual molecules, but we're already there. DNA origami, it's a field of research that's been around since 2006. It has become a field of worldwide interest. There are scientists all over the world who are doing DNA origami. In essence, it's the act of taking DNA strands and reprogramming them so they fold into specific shapes. While most people think of DNA as a rigid double helix, like a twisted ladder, in reality, it consists of two single strands with little bits, called bases, sticking out waiting to pair with a partner. There are only four bases in all of DNA, and each one bonds specifically to just one other base, like a puzzle piece. What DNA origami does is apply short strands, called staples, programmed with specific bases along a long single strand of DNA. That single strand will then bend and fold according to the base bonds. Fold it enough, and you can make all types of shapes. People have tried to design something inspired by nature, but now I'm somehow thinking about how to translate uh, our human's design ability to the nature. So the DNA is very natural building block, and at the molecular level, maybe we can use this, you know, the, the ability of human design uh, to, uh, at the scale. One of Professor Kim's students here at Seoul National University, Myung Seok Kim, uncovered a completely new way of folding DNA by accident. I made a DNA wireframe nanostructures. It was originally for other research purposes, but I observed only one or three of hundreds of DNA wireframes are folded into some shapes. The main thing is they are not randomly folded. They are only folded along the wireframe like edges. So what I did is origami of DNA origami. What's groundbreaking about his discovery was not that DNA could fold, but how it does. Previously, mm -hmm. DNA origami could only fold once. Yes. By modeling their DNA structures after paper creases, a new world of motion opened up. We add some kind of uh, strands on the edges, and then we add some other strands that can bind to uh, those protruding strands, and then that will bring this part fold it into this part. So your technology is a breakthrough because you can go from this state to folded to unfolded back yes. and forth. Yes, yes. The motions are triggered by things like pH levels, light, and nucleic acid molecules, which are the building blocks to things like DNA and RNA. What were some challenges that you encountered while developing this technology? The main challenge of the, this technology is that how to control the flexibility of this structure. Mm. So let's imagine that if you have a very thin uh, piece of paper, then you can easily fold into different uh, shapes. But it's, it's too flexible, so it's difficult to maintain the structure itself. We have to optimize the the stiffness or flexibility of the structures so that we can maintain the folded on folded state stably, but also we can easily fold and unfold with high success rate. And all at a nano scale. Yes, yes. <laughs> Whether it's creating structures that act as drug delivery systems or as biosensors that can bind to particular RNA in cancer cells leading to earlier detection, researchers here believe real world applications of their work are imminent. So how do you plan to further your research? What's next? Well, so uh, we, uh, we are happy that uh, we could realize those technology at an end scale, but still it's limited in two-dimensional space. So we want to expand our uh, 
uh, design space to three-dimensional space. And also, uh, there is also uh, another technique called kirigami, which is the cutting paper rather than folding papers. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to introduce that kind of concept at the Nanum scale. So the next great leap in DNA origami mm -hmm. is DNA kirigami not just to be able to fold and refold, mm -hmm. but to cut and even make more tweaks at a nanoscale. Yes. From molecules to micro robots, origami is finding a way to inspire another nanotechnology lab an ocean away. The vision of building tiny robots has been around for decades, uh, but nobody's ever really been able to figure out how to do it um, because some of the key concepts, like, like this idea of using folding, just weren't there. Here at the University of Pennsylvania, a robot revolution is happening. Yes, yeah, so there's a variety of different little robots in here. These robots are best seen through a microscope. The biggest one is as big as a grain of salt, and the smallest, 10 times smaller than that. You should go get it with the probe and move it over there. A lot of the robots in this lab, any of the ones that have legs, uh, have origami-inspired legs, these legs that bend from 2D to 3D by using uh, folding hinges and uh, rigid panels. To get them this small, researchers use the same machines used to make semiconductor chips. This is where we actually build all the layers of our tiny robots. And so this tool has to be able to suck basically all of the air out of the, the chamber. Now I'm going to put this in this load lock. Once created, their movements are either pre-programmed using laser patterns or controlled in real time by shining light on them. For Mark Miskin and his team, these tiny robots have the potential to change healthcare. Basically, the vision is we're going to use little tiny robots to assist in repairing damaged peripheral nerves. If you get a nerve injury, that little nerve will try to regrow. And usually nothing good comes of that uh, because the nerve just doesn't grow fast enough. What you'd like to do is be able to make that nerve grow faster. And the size of those little nerves are about the same as the size of the robots. Um, and so one technological application we're looking at are building tiny legged robots that can grab onto nerves and drag them back to the muscle they're supposed to be connected to. I think that's an unexplored space and that's something that, that we're gonna be able to move into and, and make a lot of positive impact for in the long run. From medicine to space and back, origami has the power to transform, whether it's paper or our lives, for good. Every decade, I see things that would have seemed impossible 10 years earlier. And then over the last 20 years, I've been able to see it move from being almost entirely devoted to art, but to radiating into this world of engineering and technology and to see applications uh, showing up in the real world.